just got done watching Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This is a brand new TMNT film, and hands down, this is the best one yet. I mean this for any of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies. I know we've all grown up with different versions. I know we've all grown up with different interpretations, whether it's in the shows, movies, comics. We've all grown up. But when it comes down to a movie standard, this is hands down the best one. It's not a perfect movie. I got some gripes. We'll talk about those, but I'm so excited to be talking about Mutant Mayhem and specifically what they accomplished within this film. And I'm definitely excited to hear your guys' thoughts as well, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, comment down below what your favorite interpretation of the Ninja Turtles are before seeing this one, and even afterwards if this is now your favorite version of it. Because for me, my personal favorite was the 2003 animated series. I absolutely love that show. I played every video game. I watched every episode. I still watch the damn show and that was my version of the Ninja Turtles. I love diving into some of the older games specifically. I love diving into the new Nickelodeon one that came out like a little bit after the 2003 one and when it comes out in the movies the, mute, the Michael Bay versions were not great but the original of course is nostalgia and they're enjoyable for what they are. But Going into this, I was excited for a new thing. Seth Rogen, Evan Goldberg are going to be producing this. Coming from the minds of two permanent teenagers is very much what the marketing was saying. And when you watch this film, it's brilliant in almost every sort of way that they produce this thing. Specifically the fact that they got actual teenagers to voice the turtles this time. Which is the first time in a really much anything that we've ever seen within the movies and even TV shows that they've gotten teenagers to do that. So you get this added personality already. And it also makes it very believable with certain things that they do with the teenagers in here that actually make these feel like teenage Ninja Turtles. I've always found that the Ninja Turtles filled a little bit aged up from that, but I was really happy to see that. Because this mutant mayhem, well, it's about after years of being sheltered from the human world, the Turtle Brothers set out to win the hearts of New Yorkers and be accepted as normal teenagers. Their new friend April O'Neil helps them take on a mysterious crime to syndicate, but they soon get in over their head when an army of mutants is unleashed upon them. And in a way, this film is all about acceptance. It's a coming-of-age story about four brothers who just want to be accepted by the world. And if you've ever felt like an outsider, that kind of feels very much at home. And I actually really like how they brought up April O'Neil in this movie because she is also feeling an, like an outsider. So she's easily able to relate to how these turtles are feeling. And there's just a lot of sweetness to that all. There's a lot of heartfelt moments and hilarious moments at that. Because again, like I mentioned, this is very much a coming of age story. And it has a total 90s vibe. My fiance said it perfect when we left the theater is that this very much feels like millennials meets Gen Z, two different generations coming together to bond over the Ninja Turtles. And for me, if that's not like one of the coolest things that you could ever experience, it, it is because now there's gonna be a ton of kids who this will be their new version of the Ninja Turtles. And I love that. But I'm going off on a tangent. I definitely wanna start diving into my pros. And what I definitely wanna start out with is of course the voice acting because that is a big part about this and one of the biggest parts is when you do watch a lot of animated films sometimes you can tell okay they got this major actor to come in and do the voice of this character and you know you can kind of feel like they just playing themselves within this of course like i mentioned they got actual teenagers to come in got brady newton to play Raphael, nicholas Cantu to play leonardo abby to play donatello and shaman brown jr to play michelangelo every single one of these teenagers you can believe actually feel that brotherly bond. I've had a lot of issues lately with a lot of the Ninja Turtles stuff that we've seen, whether in some of the shows and even some of the movies that I never really feel that brotherly bond between all the characters. I've never found that like they're a family. It always feels like they're just friends. This movie really makes it feel like a family, like a, an adopted family, specifically because of Jackie Chan's splinter and how great Jackie Chan is in the role. But these four brothers do feel like actual brothers. And th whether it was some of the improv that you can definitely tell that they were doing, some of the rift and jokes that they would do, it all felt real. And it actually felt like for an instance that you would just forget that you're watching an animated film and it would feel like four teenagers actually going off on one another. And I got to attend San Diego Comic-Con uh, last week before the release of the film. And one of the things that the director talked a lot about was that they had written all these jokes and then the teenagers would read them and it wouldn't sound right. And they would ask the teenagers and they're like, well, we wouldn't say this type of stuff. So they let these kids go in there and just make their own jokes and improv. And that actually is for a majority of the film, 
it does feel like that. And I actually love that that was his decision. And specifically, what I really loved is that usually when I watch any of the Ninja Turtles stuff, I, you know, everyone loves Mikey, everyone loves Raphael, sometimes Leonardo can be hit or miss, and Donatello is usually a lot of people's least favorites, at least from when I discuss people in a lot of my friend group. In this film, Donatello and Michelangelo are my favorite Ninja Turtles in here. But that's also hard for me to say because I still love Raphael in here and I still love Leonardo. They each and every one of these turtles has a personality that makes them stand out. And also each of them get the limelight to stand out in their own way to where you really come to love each and every one of them. And that's what I love. Not just one turtle got their big avenue, not just this. Every single one of them had this sweet personality to them that you will latch on to at least one or two of them. And then you'll be like, well, I still love the others. It's hard to pick. It's like if you're a parent, it's hard to pick your favorite kid. That's how I felt with these Ninja Turtles and this interpretation of them, which honestly might be one of my new favorite interpretations, if not my favorite one so far, at least in the movies. Alongside these teenagers, we also have Ice Cube, who is playing Superfly. And Superfly is awesome in here. I wanted a little bit more of Giancarlo Esposito as Baxter, Baxter Stockman because Giancarlo is amazing. But truly enough, when you look at the rest of the cast, Ice Cube is one of the big standouts from there. And also, of course, Ao Edebree, who is very much famously known for the bear. She's amazing in there. She's great as April O'Neil. I've already mentioned Jackie Chan as Splinter, but Splinter is great. And I really like what they were able to do with Splinter as well as this adopted father. I think sometimes Splinter has, again, been hit or miss in a lot of new interpretations of the Ninja Turtles. But in here, I was happy to see they gave him the limelight. At first, I was like, oh, okay, I'm liking what they're doing. They do this whole entire flashback sequence, and it's so heartfelt and sweet. And also also really hilarious but then I they kind of like push Splinter to the back and I'm like I know this is a Ninja Turtles thing but you need to focus on Splinter a little bit more and he gets definitely some moments towards the back half that made me smile and of course the rest of the cast you have like Seth Rogen John Cena Rose Byrne Paul Rudd Maya Rudolph a ton of other people also in here they're good they don't have a lot to do if I'm being completely honest on that part though put a needle in that because I do want to talk a little bit more about the other mutants when we get to my mixed and con aspects of this review I think where credit is due in this film is from the directing and writing Jeff Rowe directed this film, also had a co-director, Kyler Spears, but Jeff Rowe is that big name for me. He also helped write this film with Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg, but Jeff is an important person. If you've ever watched Gravity Falls, he was a heavy hand in creating that show, and he also co-directed The Mitchells vs. The Machines, so this is his first actual directorial debut, and I love The Mitchells vs. The Machines. I really enjoy Gravity Falls for what it is. This is such a great directorial effort just knocking it right out of the gate, bringing in new interpretation of the Ninja Turtles and making me smile for 100% of this film. And it wasn't even like because of like nostalgic things because of how much I love the Turtles. It was just pure joy watching this movie. And I actually got a vibe of like mid 90s that Jonah Hill directed movie, but like the Ninja Turtles instead with it and there's like action scenes to it. And I think whatever they decided to concoct in the back end of it all really comes to fruition here. And I think what Jeff does as a director is stunning. The animation in here, and they mentioned this also at San Diego Comic-Con, is very special because it's actually, they crafted it like the teenagers would craft and create and draw animated characters. Where I feel like when the first trailer came out, I'm like, oh, they're kind of doing a Spider-Verse thing. But when you actually watch it, it has kind of this clay animation look to it at times. And sometimes it's like this cheap 2D drawing, but also looks 3D. And it's very beautiful and kind of like oily painted, which kind of like also relates back to like some of the turtles names specifically. So I, I really love that in general because of this like Renaissance kind of era that they have for the artwork. And it just was stunning, like like hands down, like my jaw actually hit the floor at certain points when it comes down to animation. And animation is like my favorite medium of cinema. But there's two scenes in particular when it comes down to the action sequences. One early on one that takes them out, like fighting out this biker gang, which is just awesome to see how that all comes to fruition. But it's this edited one when they actually have to go from like four different locations to interrogate people. And when you see how it's edited together, I can't imagine the animators at that point. So shout out to Jeff as a visionary on that part, but also shout out to the animators on that moment too, because it, it was stunning. It, it, I just sat there and I'm like, this is awesome. And I continue to have that smile too, because of Jeff's direction and how he took this film. 
you have this coming of age story here about acceptance, but you also have this coming of age story where it has that humor knitted throughout it all. And you have teenagers being teenagers. And when you got to see them just hanging out, going out for, you know, maybe to steal some food or just explore New York, those little moments really meant the world to me. And I know today Paramount actually announced that they were gonna be doing a show and also a sequel to this movie. And that the show would kind of be the bridging of the gap for that. And by the time this film ended, I'm like, I want as much as I can with these version of the turtles and specifically just in general with this world that we are introduced to because I'm totally infatuated with it all. And I, it's been a while since I could say that like, yeah, I smiled through like an entire film just from pure joy. And I think if you were gonna ask what the definition of mutant mayhem is, it's pure joy. And I say that again, without it just being nostalgia. Ninja Turtle fans will love this, but people who have never really dove into the Ninja Turtles before, I think they're in for a wild surprise on how fun this movie is. And I think kids who have never been with the Ninja Turtles, and this will be their first time exploring them and getting to be introduced to them, this is a great introduction. It's a great origin story, and it never lacks any pacing. It's a great ebb and flow of everything in this story. I just, I can't wait to see this movie again. It's one of my favorites of the year. With that said, the last thing I do want to talk about before I get into my issues with the film is, of course, the soundtrack and the score. The soundtrack for this movie, we already knew was going to be great because of just, like, what you see in, like, the trailers. But the, the entire mixtape, I guess, is like the best way to kind of dedicate that to. It, it's, it's great, and it mixes with everything that you're seeing in here. But the score from Atticus Ross... And Trent Reznor is one of my favorite scores of the year. The second that I found out that they were composing this, I knew for a fact this was hands down going to be one of the best scores of the year because they are one of the best composers working today. And the way that they actually mixed it in with the soundtrack really works. And I actually think that it really mixes in with all the heartfelt moments, all the badass moments, but specifically the entire film as a whole. That is when we need to talk about my issues because like I mentioned off the top, this film is not perfect even though it is the best Ninja Turtles movie, there's still issues with every single Ninja Turtles film and this film in particular has a couple here and there. One, as a Ninja Turtles fan, there's some things they do with all the mutants that I wasn't the biggest fan of by the end. I like and appreciate what they did. It's a definitely a different direction and I'm excited to see how they take it, but it's not going to work for everyone. And I also think some of the mutants were a little bit of a letdown. I would have liked to see a little bit more of them, specifically Bebop and Rocksteady. I was kind of surprised they didn't use them all too much. I Honestly, I think they maybe had combined 12 lines throughout the entire film, which is just a little bit of a disappointment. Where that comes at is that Superfly is a big surprise as well. And I love how they intersected him in there. But it's the same thing with like Baxter Stockman. I don't know if it's just like a setup or something like that, but... Baxter Stockman's very hand in hand with these mutants and he's maybe only in the film for like two three scenes I think also adds me to one more thing is that I found this film to be quickly paced together and while the movie is about an hour and 30 minutes before the credits then the credits are about nine minutes which you should stay for the credits there is one end credit scene and it's it's awesome. I, I definitely smiled at it, and I, I really loved it. And it's a great epilogue to the entire story, so you should absolutely stay for it if you enjoyed the film. I kind of wish the film was at least 10, 15 minutes longer. I, I think there's some moments in there with the brothers that I would have liked just a little bit more development with. Certain heartfelt beats, I wish they would have taken their time with just a hair. I know this is a kid's film, you gotta move the film a little bit fast to make sure kids aren't bored, but also adults are gonna come to the Ninja Turtles too. And I think that's one thing I wish they would have interspliced in there because this is entertaining for adults, but there's a little bit more of a dramatic tone to this that I wish they would have taken just a hair just a little bit 10 15 more minutes could have really helped that and kind of added that pacing to not be too quick and give a little bit more emotion specifically because when you go and look at the mitchells versus the machines there are a lot of emotional points in there and that is a very fast-paced movie and i think the ninja turtles just needed a couple more moments you and mayhem put the biggest smile on my face the best tmnt film yet it might even be my favorite interpretation of the turtles yet in movie form it's hilarious it's heartfelt and an imaginative animation that really blew me away a true coming-of-age story about being accepted in a society that doesn't want you and its mid-90s vibes really got me all on board. I'm on cloud nine. I just had the time of my life watching a brand new Ninja Turtles film and 
I haven't loved the Ninja Turtles since like 2003. Like that version is my definitive version for a lot of nostalgic moments, but I can't believe I'm saying that this is just that good and I feel like I'm in second grade all over again. So thank you so much again guys for watching this. With all that said, I'm gonna give Mutant Mayhem an A minus. Thank you once again guys for watching this. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe and look out for a Ninja Turtles ranking the week of release for this film. We got a lot of fun things. I also will have a ranking of my Christopher Nolan movies that's been very much delayed. It was actually up and then I had to take it down to refix some things. So do look forward to that. Thank you so much again for watching this and of course until next time, stay classy.